Hi, it's Crystal with EverydayFoodStorage.net and today what I wanted to do is just give you a brief introduction to making yogurt at home. This is the next thing that we're going to be talking about on my blog, but before we do, we need to go over a couple things. We need to go over the health benefits of yogurt, why it's important, why you want to be eating this on a consistent basis, why it's better both nutritionally and for your pocketbook to make yogurt at home, and then thirdly, the items that you're going to need to have on hand so that we can work together on making yogurt at home. So first, let's talk about the health benefits of yogurt. The first one being that if you're lactose intolerant, this is actually a great way to get the benefits of milk in your diet. Now the lactose that you're intolerant of is a sugar found in milk that your body can't digest. And so what they do is the live cultures in yogurt, the basics, are going to basically break down that sugar for you so it doesn't get stuck in your intestines and cause all of those really uncomfortable symptoms that can come along with being lactose intolerant. Second of all, it's high in calcium, it's low in fat, it tastes good, but did you know it can actually help you lose weight? I read a study um, via the Milk Council, National uh, Dairy Council, where they did a study with people who were trying to lose weight. They took one group of people and just had them diet normally, which means exercise and cut calories. But how they cut calories, they didn't care. They took another group of people and they were doing the same thing, exercise and cutting calories. But as part of their calorie uh, consumption during the day, they were supposed to have three servings of milk and those three servings could count as milk, cheese, or yogurt. What they found was the people that consumed three servings of dairy in a day actually lost significantly more weight than those who didn't. Now the nice thing about yogurt is, like I said before, it pairs up with those nice probiotics, those, those live bacteria cultures that are found in yogurt. Um, we're gonna talk about this a little bit later, but it's gonna matter which ones are actually in your yogurt to get the full effects of the probiotics, which are so um, hip right now, for lack of a better word. Now, let's talk about why you would want to make yogurt at home. Um, a lot of times, this is scary to a lot of people. It can sound really cumbersome. Um, you could be worried maybe about safety issues with uh, fermenting your milk, which is basically what we're going to be doing to make yogurt. That can seem sort of scary. But let me assure you, it's entirely safe and it's entirely easy. Now the benefits beyond that are huge. First of all, for your pocketbook. This will save you at least half, and depending, this is depending on where you live. I base this off prices where I live. But just so you know, it's about 20 cents. You know, So you buy yogurt in the store in six ounce cartons. For you to make your own equivalent of a 20 ounce size of yogurt, it's about 20 cents. Now we're also going to go over some things like making your own yogurt cheese, which can be used as a substitute for cream cheese. It is about 50 cents to make your own yogurt cheese, which is kind of like a cream cheese, uh, versus the dollar or more that you're going to spend at the store. And then also I'm going to show you how to make Greek yogurt, which is all the rage right now and absolutely fantastic, and your own frozen yogurt. Now the frozen yogurt that I try to pattern mine after is a Dryers brand, which is actually a very expensive um, brand of frozen yogurt. And so when you look at it that way, you're saving at least half on all of these dairy products. Plus you're having control over what you're actually putting in the yogurt. Um, what a lot of people don't know is yogurt is actually supposed to have kind of a tang to it. And if it doesn't, it's because they added in a whole lot of sugar. Uh, take for example a very common uh, yogurt like this. Um, I don't know if you know this, but about 63% of the calories of this yogurt come directly from sugar. Um, it contains things, um, it has uh, sugar and corn syrup and corn syrup solids. So that's kind of a lot of sugar. One of the things I like best about making things at home, as you know, is that you have more control over your ingredients. So you can actually take charge and put in it what you want. Now along with that, let's talk about the things that you're going to need and let's start with the yogurt. Um, it's important that we have the right yogurt starter. So what that means is you're going to need to find a plain yogurt or at least a vanilla yogurt, but nothing with fruit or anything else in it. Um, that's going to mess with our yogurt making. And what you want to do is you want to look first and foremost to make sure that it says that it contains live cultures. Um, if it says it was only made with live cultures, what that means is exactly what it said. It was made with live cultures, but in the packaging process, they have then killed those bacteria, and so those bacteria are no longer there. You'll still have the benefits of um, those cultures have already broken down the lactose if you're lactose intolerant, but for all the other benefits of probiotics, like the healthy digestive tract, the um, improved immune system, 
the cutting down of certain infections in your body, that's not there anymore. And also, if we don't have the live bacteria, we're not gonna be able to make yogurt. So that's important thing number one. Important thing number two is, actually, there are a lot of different kinds of bacteria found in yogurt. Now, the two most common, um, which are the L. Uh, Bulcaricus and the Thermophilus, those actually aren't even necessarily considered probiotics. That's sort of a debate that I read online, whether or not those should actually technically be classified by the FDA as probiotics, because they haven't been able to find that those um, give you all of the digestive health because they don't last very long in your intestines. They can't really stand up to uh, everything that's down there. So those are kind of questionable. They're still good. But if you really want the full effect, what you want to do is find a yogurt that has a lot. So the yogurt that I found that has all the, all the essential probiotics and everything that you want for all the health reasons of probiotics is Mountain High. And um, I've been able to find it everywhere but Walmart. So you shouldn't have too hard of a time finding it. But just so you know, it contains the Bulgaricus, the Thermophilus, the Acidophilus, the Bifidus, and the Cassi, which is basically the most important ones that you want. And actually, if you want to think about terms of cost, if you're doing one like this uh, that is supposed to help with probiotic health, um, it doesn't even have all of those same uh, active life cultures. It has three of them, but not all five like the Mountain High has. And these are really expensive, and the only thing that's helping you with the digestive tract is those live bacteria. So we're basically going to make our own ultra-healthy, low-sugar, um, yogurt that's going to help regulate digestive tracts as well for a fraction of the price. And don't worry, I know that makes it all of a sudden sound like it's not going to taste good and it's going to be really gross. And especially once I mentioned that we're going to use powdered milk, okay, so it's not going to be gross, I promise you. I've eaten it, I made my family eat it, and I was actually very surprised at how good it tasted. And you know, I don't put anything on my blog that isn't good, that my family doesn't eat. So, once you get your yogurt starter, um, and you can do low fat or whole fat, um, or regular is what they'll call it. No one wants to think of it in terms of whole fat. Uh, once you get that, that's going to be your yogurt starter. And once you get your yogurt starting at home, you can actually use some of your homemade yogurt to act next time as your yogurt starter. But you should know that that's not going to last forever. The more you reuse your starter from your homemade yogurt, the tangier it's going to get. So at some point, you're going to want to start over and use a fresh yogurt starter again. Now, if you don't want to do this, you can also purchase uh, the cultures, the live cultures online but I'm not going to show how to do that with this segment. I'm just gonna show how to use the really easy stuff you buy from the store, and you don't need to buy this large um, of a container. I've just been doing a lot of experimenting. Uh, you can just buy a six ounce. You're only gonna need about um, a half cup to get started with. So uh, six ounces will do you good. You only need four ounces of that. Now the other thing you're gonna need is powdered milk. Um, a lot of people will tell you that in order to start making yogurt, um, you should buy a store-bought or you know, fresh milk. And that's true, you can. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to do it entirely out of fat-free powdered milk. Um, we're going to be using uh, generally sort of a lot. Um, so you're gonna wanna make sure you've got enough to get going. What we're gonna do is we're basically gonna make two quarts of milk and then add additional powdered milk to that to add in some protein to make it so our yogurt turns out really great. Now, uh, I know you're probably thinking, oh, but I don't have a yogurt maker, and what am I gonna do? Well, neither do I. Who wants a yogurt maker? They're kind of mid-level expensive, and the only thing you can use them for is yogurt. So it's this big, bulky thing, costs money, and sits in your kitchen. Actually, what we're gonna use to make our yogurt is, I have a, uh, I think this is five quart, five quart slow cooker, and that's what we're gonna do to make our yogurt. I've checked it out with my friends at the Utah State Extension Service and they say it's entirely safe. So we're gonna make it really easy and use our crock pot. How easy? You'll just have to check back next time to see. Now the other things you wanna make sure that you have on hand are the items that we're gonna to need to make our uh, Greek style yogurt and also our yogurt cheese. Now if you've never heard of Greek yogurt, um, it's really good and it's kind of all the rage right now. What it is is it's a thicker yogurt and it has kind of twice 
has a more condensed amount of protein. So usually the ones that you can buy in the store say they have twice the amount of protein as regular yogurt. So obviously that's gonna make you full faster and some other benefits like that. But the Greek yogurt is also really great as a sour cream substitute. So if you're looking to cut calories that way as well, you can use the Greek yogurt to cut those calories. Now in terms of the yogurt cheese, what you wanna think of the yogurt cheese is as like a cream cheese. Uh, the cream cheese substitute can be used in a ton of ways, along with the Greek yogurt. Um, yogurt in general, let me give you a couple of ideas of how you can use yogurt. If you're thinking the only way to eat it is just plain, let me fill you in. You can use yogurt or Greek yogurt or the cream cheese substitute, the yogurt cheese, in a myriad of ways. Like, you can use yogurt to substitute mayonnaise in salad dressings, so you can now make your salad dressings a whole lot healthier, a whole lot less fat, and again, you've got your control over your own ingredients. You can use the Greek yogurt as a sour cream substitute, like I said before. You can use the yogurt cheese as a cream cheese substitute, make it fat-free with all those added health benefits of the live active cultures. You can use it in recipes calling for cream cheese. You can also use it to um, make really good low-fat frozen yogurt. You can also use it to um, extend out your peanut butter. You can mix it half and half with peanut butter and it will take on the flavor of peanut butter. You can also mix it with things like mayonnaise to help extend out your mayonnaise. The benefits of yogurt and the ways you can use it are endless and we're going to be talking about all of them on my blog over the next couple weeks. So in order to make your Greek yogurt and your uh, yogurt cheese, what you're going to want to make sure you have on hand is cheesecloth. Now if you don't have cheesecloth, you can also use um, coffee filters. Those will also work as well. But the problem with coffee filters is they're not big enough to set in your strainer. So you're kind of limited by how much you can do. But if you just want to try some before you actually buy some cheesecloth, you can go ahead and do that. Now, uh, I'm going to have a link of where you can buy cheesecloth because if you just buy it in a regular grocery store, it can be kind of expensive. Two square yards was $3.99 at my local grocery store, and usually this is down like the gadget aisle if you want to try and find it. Um, also, you're going to want to make sure you have a strainer. This can multitask. You probably have one of these if you do any canning or anything, but you're going to want to make sure it's a strainer like this because what we're going to do is we're going to set the, the cheesecloth inside and set it in a bowl. So with that, make sure you have a bowl that is pretty much the same size as your strainer that you can set inside. Other than that, if you want to have um, little containers to put your yogurt in. I always just put mine in a really big container and scoop out of it just like you would with a one quart container that you buy from the store. Um, and that, those are the things that you're going to need. Now this is going to be really exciting because this absolutely blew my mind. This opened up a whole new world of things that I could do A with food storage and B with powdered milk and C with yogurt to help cut calories, help me feel fuller longer, um, extend out some of the products I have in my house that tend to be more expensive. And I wanna share this with you. So over the next couple weeks, like I said, I'm gonna be doing yogurt. So make sure you have everything on hand so that we can start working on this together and I can show you and your family how you can do all of this with your food storage, with powdered milk, and for a lot less money than what you can buy in the store. So keep checking back with www.everydayfoodstorage.net.